was in his fail and he got mad at God. And he said unto Cain, why art thou wrong? Why is your countenance fallen, Cain? If you just do well like Abel, shall not it be accepted? And if you do us not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall he desire and shall rule over him. Cain went out into the field. Verse 8 says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when he was in the field, that Cain rose up and killed Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is your brother, Cain? And he said, I don't know. Why are you asking me, dog? Got smart with God. Read it. Am I my brother's keeper? Who do you think I am, God? He, he ought to take care of himself. And when he said that, and he said, Hey, Cain, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And he said, now, first man that I see in the Bible that God ever cursed. He said, you are cursed from the earth, which has opened up her mouth to receive thy brother's blood. When thou tillest the ground, now, he didn't put the curse on Cain. He said, you are cursed from the earth. The earth is, is not going to yield to you. Let me read it to you. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield her strength. That's why some men are always broke. The ground won't yield to them because they don't think it's important to give God the tithe. That's why some men can't find a job. They don't think it's important to give God the tithe. It's quiet in this church today. That's why some men always get laid off. Some girl shake herself and he do something stupid and get fired. The ground won't yield to you. You're not a tither. There it is in the Bible. Read it for yourself. You are cursed from the earth, which has opened up her mouth to receive your brother's blood. Then God says in verse 12, as I close, when you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield her strength to you. That's why some men and women can't find good jobs. Because they don't give nothing to God. The ground will yield to you. The ground will bless you. Jobs will find you out. They'll look for you. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why you don't, have, you don't have to be bullied by God. By, by a bullet by your, by your boss. Because you said, God says, if I'm a tither, the ground's going to yield to me. I can go find another job. Somebody say amen. I can go find another job because I am blessed from the earth. Because I'm going to give God the dime. So you got to understand how money works in the life of a family. That's why some families never buy a home. They stay in an apartment because the man won't tithe. The woman won't tithe. And they think that they can keep what they have. The ground is not going to yield to you. And then God said, Cain, I'm going to put a mark on you, Cain. You're going to have to run for the rest of your life. Single ladies, make sure that man ain't got a mark on him from God. That he will not have success. Somebody say amen. When thy tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her strength. He said, a fugitive and a vagabond shall thy be in the earth. Cain started crying then in verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punish is more than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from the face shall I be hid from thy faith. God said, I don't want to see you no more. You're going to get mad over me about giving me, giving me a sacrifice when I've been good to you, boy. When I brought you up. When I touched your dad. When I blessed you. When I helped your family. Now you're going to get mad at me about giving me a sacrifice. I don't want to see you no more. He put a mark on Cain. Cain had to run for the rest of his life. That's why some men move from city to city to city. That's why some men can't find a the job. They bounce from job to job to job. Listen to the pastor, not the high preacher, the pastor. Listen to the pastor. 
Make it up in your mind to tithe. Because I don't want to run, and I don't want the earth not to yield for me. When I apply for a job, I want to get it. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why some people never get the job of their choice, because they won't tithe. I'm just trying to help you. Somebody say amen. amen. God said, Cain, you don't talk to me like that. I'm going to put a mark on you. You're going to have to run for the rest of your life. The first murder happened over giving to God. I know it's a struggle to give. I settled it once and for all. And I said, I'm going to give for the rest of my life. And I'm a tither. I'm a tither. Because I know I don't want God to say, depart from me. Somebody say amen. amen. When, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I want the ground to yield. Somebody say yield. Somebody say yield. If you're giving, make your checks payable to Emmanuel Christian Center or ECC. you get record of your giving. And listen, if you can't give God the tithe on $50,000, you'll never give him the tithe, tithes on a million dollars. If you can't get, hear, hear me now. Let me pass to you for a minute. If you can't give the, God the tithe on $50,000, you'll never give him the tithes on a million dollars. So you can cancel that million dollar plan that's coming into your life. Somebody say Amen. Make up your mind. If you can't give God the tithe on $100,000, you never give him the tithe on $2 million. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why families struggle. That's why they struggle. Because if you can't give God the tithe on a dollar, which is nothing but a dime, and you're asking God, bless me, Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my territory. I'm talking to somebody. I sense it by the Holy Ghost. I know I'm, I'm talking to someone. There's a man that hear me. You can't give God the tithe on a dime. On a dollar. You never give him the tithe on a million dollars. Somebody say amen. The average NBA player and NFL player played three years in the league. Three to five. When they leave the league, they leave the league what? Broke. They leave the league broke. They leave the league broke. Because they don't think God is important. And the devourer comes and eat up all their money. They leave the league what? Broke. Don't be like those guys. Whatever you got, if I got a little bit, I'm going to give God a little bit whatever I got. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you for giving. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those people in your family that tell you, why are you giving that church your money? And when they get in trouble, who do they call? You. Because you are blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. The first murder happened in the Bible over giving to God. The devil don't want you to give to God. When you get your inheritance, he's going to say, and you got to give the church, you know, a tithe on a $2 million inheritance. He's going to say, that's too much. It's never too much for God. One cancer pill costs $500. One. My friend, his wife got cancer. And he showed me a pill. One day they said, he said, Simpkins, this pill costs $500. Wow. And it didn't save her life. Somebody say amen. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. If you're going to trust in the Lord, stand up with me with your tithe in your hand and say, I'm just going to trust in the Lord. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to be annoyed. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. Raise your hands up with your tithe. Everybody say, Lord, I receive your blessing in my life. Thank you for all your help. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. If you're giving, come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith.
give the Lord a hair clap for his goodness and all of his mercy. Somebody say amen. I'm going to read one scripture this morning. Let us all stand at this time. I'm going to work from one scripture, all five points from one scripture this morning. Thank you for being here today. What a great day it is to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Today my message is that you, for that special hour in your life, you need God's power. Somebody say amen. Mark chapter number 14. Mark chapter 14, verse number 38. Excuse me. Mark chapter 14, verse 38. Jesus now, Jesus was saying to his disciples on his way to the cross, uh, they didn't know that he was going to the cross. He kept telling them. But uh, today he told them uh, he went to the garden to pray. See, you got an hour in your life. Everybody's got an hour that's coming your way that you're going to have to pray. All of us got an hour, one, that one hour that's coming your way. You got an hour coming your way that you're going to have to pray and ask God for help. Somebody say help. Mark chapter 14, verse 38. I want to ask my wife if she'll read. Start at verse number 37. Start at verse number 37. Please read. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, uh -huh. and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Why are you sleeping, Peter? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch Couldn't you pray and watch with me for one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Yes. The spirit truly is ready, uh -huh. but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Please read. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. Again he went away and prayed and spake the same thing to Peter because they were sleeping. Somebody say amen. Read on. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. Found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy. Heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. They didn't know what to say to him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, uh -huh. Sleep on now. Sleep on, you sleepers. And take your rest. Take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. The hour is upon. Behold, them. the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. I'm betrayed into the hands of sinners. He said, Rise up and let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. There's an hour in your life. Raise your hand and let's pray together. Father, thank you for your wonderful people. We bless them. We encourage them. We speak faith over them. We say that you're going to work everything out in their lives. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, may it be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God is a good God. He loves you. And everything is going to work out if you'll just keep walking with the Lord. There's an hour that come into our lives where we all need God's help. Somebody say help. help. We all need God's help. There's a day that's coming your way with an hour that you got to have God's help. No matter what it is, and all of us will come to that place in our lives where we need God's help. But then we must know that now is the time to pray. Somebody say pray now. Pray. This is our season to pray. Somebody say pray now. When you close your mouth to God in prayer, you, you close the doors of heaven. And the angels that will come to bring you your answers. So you got to be a person that's bold in prayer. You got to be a person that's deliberate in prayer. You got to be a person that is consistent in prayer and not give up. Don't fall asleep in your prayer life. Somebody say, pray now. Prayer releases the power of God in the earth realm. Anything great in the, in the earth realm that ever happened, it happened because somebody prayed. All of the great movements came out of prayer. The assemblies of God came out of prayer. The church of God in Christ came out of prayer. All of your, most of your great denominations came out of prayer. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, and so you got to pray. Somebody say pray now. Pray now. Everything great came out of prayer. The civil rights movement came out of prayer with Dr. King and his group. Somebody say amen. amen. Anything great in the earth realm came out of prayer. Oral Roberts University that stands today as a beacon with one of the most endowed universities in the nation came out of prayer from a man by the name of Oral Roberts that walked out into an open field and started speaking in tongues and started praying and saying, God, I need money to build you a university. And God started touching people's heart to give money to him to build a university. Anything great in the earth realm 
came out of prayer. Jesus was now trying to teach his disciples a sermon and a strategy on how to make it in this life. We are going to have to pray. Somebody say, pray now. You can't afford to be silent in your prayer life because prayer makes the difference. Prayer makes the difference. Somebody say, pray now. Our nation was birthed on the prayer and the word of the Lord of pilgrims that came to this country that came and said, we need help. Somebody say, help. So they were so, they were so excited about what had happened that they put on all of our money. In God, we trust. If you got a dollar bill in your pocket, you will find those words. In God, we trust. Somebody say amen. amen. So you got to understand that you can't be silent in prayer. You got a sickness in your family, you got to cry out. Lord, I need your help. Can't be silent. You got a child that's acting up. You can't be silent. You got to pray. Somebody say, pray now. Anything great in the earth realm, universities all across this country was birthed in prayer. But now we've gotten to the place to where we got money in the bank. And we don't think that prayer matters anymore. But I'm here to tell you that it makes the difference in your life. It makes the difference in your family. Your daughter's not going to make it if you don't pray for her. Your son's not going to make it if you don't pray for him. Somebody say amen. amen. Your grandchildren are not going to make it if you don't pray for them. You got to pray now. Somebody say pray now. Amen. Build a notebook just on your family. Your nieces and nephews are not going to make it if you don't pray for them. That son's not going to graduate from college unless you pray and ask God for help. Somebody say help. Amen. See, God, the Bible is very clear. And it says that we be no more children tossed to and fro. Carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning and craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That we grow up and say, I'm a person of prayer. We grow up and we pray before we eat our meal. We grow up and we don't care what people say in Walmart when somebody asks you for prayer. Stop and pray for them. We, we, we grow up. Somebody say, grow up. And we don't care what the doctors say when, when they give you a bad report. Right there in the office, you stop, plead the blood, pray in tongues, and you just say, Lord, you are my help. The doctor don't have the final say. We would have buried my mom 15 years earlier if we would have just listened to the doctor. Now, I know God set them in the earth realm to help us. But you can't make them a God. Because they, a lot of them are hooked into the pharmaceutical companies. And that's why they want to put you on medicine and not vitamins. Somebody say amen. amen. Because they get kickbacks. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. And that's why you got to pray. Be no more henceforth children. If he said this is all we can do, no. There are other alternatives out there. Find them. Somebody say find them. Amen. Thank God for doctors. But you got to know that Jesus said we're going to have to pray. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Don't close your mouth in prayer. Somebody say, pray now. Somebody say, pray now. We got to pray. Jesus gave them strategies. Number one, he said to them, you got to watch. Somebody say, watch. We are henceforth no more children. We walk in the authority of the believer. We walk in the authority of the word. We have faith going forward. We know that God's going to hear our prayer. We know that God's going to answer our prayer. We know that things are going to work out because we pray. And then we do like the old people say, the squeaky wheel gets the what? Grease. And that's why we're going to call every day. Somebody say every day. You can't be so quiet. You got to call out every day. But then you got to watch. Jesus told them to watch with spiritual eyes. Watch. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You got to watch with spiritual eyes. Stay awake, stay alert in life. Your adversary walking by as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Devour. Somebody say, stay alert. If you want to be a great linebacker, one of the things you have to do, they teach you, they should teach you from peewee league all the way up is keep your head on a swivel. The great linebackers always got their head on a swivel. They see what's coming behind them, they see. But th those linebackers that look straight ahead, 
They always get blocked. They always get blindsided, and sooner or later, they'll be out of the game. You got to watch. Somebody say, watch. watch. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, yeah. keep your head on the swivel. Keep your head on the swivel. Watch. Look behind you when you're driving. When you're driving, don't just look one time. You got to look three or four times to make sure somebody's not coming behind you. Somebody say, watch. watch. Jesus told them to watch, stay alert, watch. He said, the enemy walketh about as a rowing lion. Seeking whom he may devour. We're going to have to watch. For the spirit of blindness is upon our nation today. The spirit of blindness is upon us. And we're going to have to watch. You want to see the spirit of blindness work? Watch this next presidential election coming up. You will see the spirit of blindness. People will say stupid stuff. They will say crazy stuff. Why? They are blind. Somebody say amen. You can't lead a nation like America without having spiritual eyes. We were birthed with spiritual eyes. Now it's blind leading the blind. And Jesus said they're both going to fall in the ditch. We got to have eyes. Somebody say eyes. Your family need eyes, men. You can't lead your family blind. Your wife need eyes. Let me tell you, ladies, what I told them yesterday at the man up. Most of our women are power women. What do you mean, Pastor? They, make, they got the job. They make money. They're in charge. They're in leadership. They can make it without you. So if you're going to lead that kind of woman, you're going to have to have some eyes. Do I have any ladies that would say amen? amen. No lady want to be led by a blind man. She get out her Bible, and then you go over there and watch the Broncos. The Broncos bring no insight into your life. Get your Bible and put it by your bed and read it every night. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus told them to watch. They need spiritual eyes going forward. The power of God comes to the man or the woman that have God's eyes that they can see. The second thing he told them to do is he said, I want you to pray. Somebody say pray. pray. Somebody say pray now. He said in Luke 18, 1, men ought to always pray and not to what? Faint. How dare you, sir, think you can get through life by not praying? How dare you think that you can make it in that company without praying? There are groups aligned against you already on your job. You just need to pray. They already got somebody else looking at your job. You need to pray. You ain't that good. Somebody say Amen. We need to ask God for help. Somebody say, help. Help. We need to ask God for help. Jesus said, pray. And then he said in John 15 and 7, he gave us a, a phenomenal strategy. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you what, will. And it shall be done. That's enough for me. I can take that one scripture right there. And I don't need nothing else from the Bible. I could take that one scripture right there. I can ask what I will. If your word abide in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit, I can ask what I will. Yes, I'm going to pray. Prayer makes the difference. Number one, he told them to watch. Somebody say, watch. Look at your neighbor and do your head like that. Tell them to watch, 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 watch. When you got kids, you got to watch your kids. The problem with parenting today is we don't watch our children. Go to Walmart. You'll see a little boy coming around the corner. Where you come from? <laughs> and you look around the corner, ain't no mom nowhere. No dad nowhere. Somebody say amen. They, they just roam. Kids, they just roam. They just roam. No wonder why, why, why the, predator, the predators grab them. Because ain't nobody watching them. You got One thing I love about my wife, she watched our kids. She watched our kids. Jordan said she overwatched. She watched our kids. Where y'all going? What y'all doing? I see you. You got to watch and pray. Somebody say watch and pray. Let's not be blind, saints. Let's watch and pray. Prayer is your eyes. Prayer is your eyes. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call unto me, I'll answer you. Show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Some men think they can lead a woman with blind on. 
you can't lead your wife. She run the company downtown. <laughs> now you think you can lead her. Come on, man. Somebody say, come on, man. You got to read it. The way you lead her is you lead her in the word. You single ladies, don't get no guy ain't got no eyes. They don't believe in the word. He going to lead you in the blindness. With blinders on. And Jesus said they all going to fall in the ditch. Somebody say amen. That's what's wrong with a lot of families. Men don't have eyes to see. Don't let your wife beat you praying. Don't let your wife beat you reading the Bible. Don't let your wife beat, beat you being a spiritual leader. Somebody say amen. amen. You come to, come to the table, then your wife kneel down to prayer. No, baby, get up. That's my prayer. No. Early in the morning, she's sitting up there reading the Bible before she go to work. You over there sleeping. No, baby. Men, if you let your wife beat you spiritually, you'll never lead her. I ain't got no help in here. If you let your wife beat you spiritually, you will never lead her. Woo, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church today. Let me, let me say it again. Men, if you let your wife beat you spiritually, you will never be able to lead her. Oh, you'll lead in little areas. But walking in the authority of the family, raising the children up in the authority of the word, won't happen. That's why we got a million kids in gangs. Because we as men have abducted our responsibility. Somebody say amen. amen. You got to lead your kids. Somebody say lead your kids. Lead your kids. Jesus told them to watch and pray. Somebody say watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Somebody say pray now. Raise your hands all over the eye, all over the house, and everybody say with me. Say, Lord, teach me how to watch and pray and pray now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody say, Amen. We gotta watch and pray, and God will help us. God will bless us. God will lead us. God will guide us because He wants to hear from you. The third thing that your strategy that Jesus gave them was that, that if you don't watch and if you don't pray, you'll enter into temptation. You'll enter in the temptation. You'll enter in the temptation. The power of God opens your eyes so you can see the devil coming. The power of God helps you to get through what you're going through because you'll pray. The power of God tells you that you can make it and you don't have to quit. Somebody say amen. amen. The power of God, when, it, when you pray and it comes into your life, then you can overcome the old temptation. Drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, whatever it is, gambling. You, you can pray and you can fight back. Somebody say fight back. Fight back. Somebody say fight back. fight back. Who wants to be in a fight and can't fight back? They're just beating up on you then you can't fight back. No. You want to be in a fight where you can fight back, where the ground is equal. Somebody say amen. amen. And then if you beat me, you beat me fair and square, but I'm here to fight back. Somebody say fight back. You must have the power to say no to temptation, the power to overcome temptation. Things I used to do, sir, I don't do no more. I'm a man now. You used to go to the strip club. You ain't got to go there no more. You used to go to Black Hawk and try to win. You ain't got to go there no more. You go there and eat their food. And let them little machine go. Ding, 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 You're a man now. You don't have to give in when they call you. Somebody say amen. amen. Because now you got the power. Somebody say the power. Somebody say the power. The power to overcome temptation. That you are no more children tossed to and fro. But you, can't, well, you just got to give in. When the cigarette calls, you got to, ooh, I got to go have a smoke. I got to go outside to have a smoke. No, you grow beyond that. The Spirit of God has empowered my life. Now, I don't need a smoke. Somebody say amen. amen. No temptation has overtaken you whereby God has not already made a way for you to escape. Somebody say amen. amen. Lady, don't mess around with that guy. He'll mess you up. Somebody say amen. amen. You got a happy home, a nice car. And you flirting with him at work, he going to mess you up. 
he going to mess you up. Because no man want another man messing with his woman. Now, Hollywood's got a different, they got a different version today. The Hollywood women show all their stuff all the time. And they just have, a, they, they just have an open marriage. It's just open. Somebody say open. open. Just open. But a real man, do I have any real men here? Bark at me. If you got a real man in the house, he don't want nobody else to mess with his woman. Oh! Do I have any men that know what I'm talking about? Oh, you, you don't, no, no, no. You go down to the job and say, hey, that's my wife. Somebody say amen. She don't have to work here. She's my wife. I'll take care of her. Oh, it's quiet up in here today. Somebody say amen. But you got to know, no, Jesus said, you will fall in the temptation. Tell your neighbor, don't fall in the temptation. Don't fall in the, a lot of your family members are in temptation. You know your sister, your cousin, your brother, your, your uncle, your, your niece, they're in temptation. That's why you got to forget about yourself. Try to win them to the Lord. Because it's going to mess them up. It's going to mess them up. The Bible says that no man is going to have mercy on another man that's messing with his wife. Somebody say amen. amen. It's going to mess them. It's going to mess them up. Your loved ones that are lost, you, you, need, to get, you need to help them. So you get straight in your life and come to church. You're going to mess yourself up. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, those that are sick, they're living in temptation. Those that are hurting, living in temptation. No, you got to straighten up your life and live for the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. In the, the last days, we must do all that we can to win the loss, to win our lost loved ones, to win our lost friends, to win lost coworkers. There's somebody on your job that needs you to tell them about Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I stopped to get my wife car washed yesterday, and then uh, the guy that was in charge of the car wash down there with the kids out there washing cars at, at the tire place, you know, he said, I said I, he introduced himself, I introduced him. He said, oh, you passed out? I heard about you. I said, really? What would you hear? He said, I heard nothing but good things. I said, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> because center men will tell you what they hear. But he said, I played ball with your son. I'm coming back to you. I'm, I'm not in church now, but I'm coming to church. Somebody say amen. amen. He was waiting for me to tell him. He was waiting for me to tell him about life. He was waiting for me. I said, yeah, I said, do you have kids? No, my wife is pregnant. I said, man, raise your kids in church. You can't raise them by yourself. I said, raise your kids in church. I said, I raised three grown men in church. Raise your kids in church. Somebody say amen. amen. I said, where you been going to church? I ain't been going nowhere, but I've been listening to my friend I mean, and talking about uh, the, uh, Christianity is a white man religion. I said, man, you listening to a lie. Can I just be transparent for a minute? I said, I said fool, you listen. I told him, I said, fool, you listen to a lie. I said, black people been in the Bible since the time of Jesus. Before the time of Jesus, we've been around. I said, you listen to us. I said, let me tell you something. If I can be honest. I said, let me tell you something, man. I said, the last person to help Jesus Christ on the earth was a black man. It ain't no white. You are, you are, I said, you've been listening to a lie. And they got you deceived. And you're going to mess up your family and mess up your life. Somebody say amen. I say, I know in the heart of Jesus, he got a special place for every black man. I ain't got no help in here today. Somebody ought to say amen. Now, we love white people too, but I'm just telling you, I had to help him. Because he was deceived and he was a fool. And that's the problem with a lot of our men. They think the wrong thing and they are listening to the voice of the enemy and they are lying. Raise your hands all over the house. Somebody help me out. Everybody say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. You got to get your loved ones in church. All of heaven rejoice when one sinner gets saved. When one sinner gets saved, it makes the heart of God happy. It makes the heart of God happy. All of heaven rejoice when one sinner repents. Somebody say amen. amen. Number four, he said, the, the flesh is weak. Oh, your flesh. How many, how many of you have fallen in sin and knew it was your flesh? Don't raise your hand. 
The flesh is weak. You just fall in the sin. Ray Ray called you. You know Ray Ray ain't no good. This Ray Ray got this girl in jail years ago. Then one day Ray Ray called and she went back to him. Got in trouble again. Just weak. The Bible says in Joel 3.10, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. Somebody say amen. God told Joshua when he put him in leadership after Moses, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou this maid. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. See, you got to come to a place in your life where you are no longer tossed to and fro, where you're no longer just some little weak Christian. you got to come to a place in your life where you stand on the authority of the believer that God is my Father, and in Him I live and move and have my being. you got to come to a place in your life where you know that I am strong because the Lord is my strength. I look to the hill with cometh my help. Somebody shout, help. You got to come to a place in your life where you're not just some little weakling girl. Every time that boy call, you are letting him come over for a bee call. It's time to grow up. It's time to be strong. It's time to grow out of our weakness. Somebody say, help. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we're going to remember the name of the Lord. Because when I look back over my life, am I in the right church? The Lord's been good to us. When I look back over my life, the Lord's been good to my children. The Lord's been good to my wife. The Lord's been good to my church. The Lord's been good to my life. And I'm just going to give him praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say it again, hallelujah. And then Jesus told him the last thing in that verse. He said, the spirit is strong. The spirit is strong. Build up your spirit. Somebody say, build it up. Don't be a weakling. Just a weakling. You know, somebody, somebody said, you go to a, a party and all of a sudden you see Mr. Jimmy Dean on the counter. Mr. Jack Rams on the counter. Jack Daniels on the counter. You know, or, or Mr. Hennessy on the counter. You just start shaking. I got to have a drink. You got to grow beyond that. They ain't able to grow beyond that. Grow beyond that. Go over to the table, pour you some water. And look at those bottles and say, not today. I'm at a better place in my life. Y'all used to dominate me, but not today. I am strong today. Somebody say Amen. And he said he, that you got to have the power that raised Jesus from the dead. If it quickens your mortal body, then you can walk away. Somebody say, walk away. Walk away. Lady, you got to seal your lip. Yeah, you can curse your husband out. Yeah, you can cut him down. Yeah, you can make him feel this big. But you ain't doing yourself no favor. Because Sally may have to call him down and build him up. And tell him how good he looks. You ain't got no belly. That's just your intestine that kind of enlarged as you got older. <laughs> they tell him all kind of stuff. You ain't got no big head. That's just your brain that just grew a little bigger. You cutting him down. Next thing you know, he's going down to Sally Mae's house and she lied to him. Am I in the right church here? Somebody say, you, you got to hold your peace. Somebody say, hold your peace. And say, I'm sorry, I should have never said that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Somebody say, I am strong. The Bible says you shall receive power. Somebody say, power. Stop following the crowd. Walk alone. I graduated in college because I walked alone. I didn't go to every party that they had in the dorm. I didn't go to every strip club that some of the players invited me to. I didn't go and smoke and get high like some of them asked me to. Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't go down to every dorm party. Stayed in my room. And it was time, when it was time to graduate, I had 33 blue chip players that come from all over the college, all over the nation to the University of Tulsa. Only three of us graduated on time. 
See, you, you, you got to walk alone. And you got to have the toughness to say, I can make it by all by myself. Because the Lord is on my side. I'm not going to follow the crowd. I can walk by myself and listen to the voice of the Lord. Somebody say amen. And don't be the person that just got to be with the crowd. Some people always got to follow the crowd. You don't have to follow the crowd. Chart your own course. Go on your own trail. Take the trail less travel. And watch how God will bless your life. Somebody say amen. Be strong in the Lord. Call in his power every day. Raise your hand all over the house and everybody say, Lord, I need your power. Say it again. Say, Lord, I need your power in my life. I receive it. Say it again. I receive it. One more time. I receive it. Now clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your help. Thank you for the unction of the Holy Ghost. We are more than conquerors. We can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. No longer weak. No longer frail. No longer strengthlessness. We have God's power. Somebody say, I am empowered. One more time. I am empowered. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, church, who can be against us? If God is on your side, who can be against us? You just tell the devil, go on back to hell. The Lord is on my side. If God is for us, who can be against us? No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. No longer weak. I stand in the authority of the Word of God. I preach in the authority of the Holy Ghost. I preach under the anointing of the power of God. Somebody say, I am blessed. Oh, help me one time. Just one more time. Help me. Somebody say, I am blessed. No longer weak. No longer frail. No longer strengthless. I am empowered by the Holy Ghost. I receive it in Jesus' name. If you receive it, put your hands together like a strong Christian. No longer weak. No longer frail. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Make me the lie down in green pasture. Leadeth me beside the steel wall. He restores my soul. Leadeth me the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemy, you will you restore my you will, in the name of Jesus. So I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor. Somebody shout, Hallelujah! Say it again, Hallelujah! One more time, Hallelujah! Goodness and mercy is gonna follow me some of the days of my life. A few of the days of my life. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I walk in the authority of the Word of God. I walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost. I walk in the authority of the pastoral anointing. I walk in the authority of the favor. Somebody shall favor. Shall favor. Open your mouth and shout favor. Now give the Lord a hand clap. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you. We walk in the authority of the life of the believer. I am. Somebody say, I am. Blessed. Say it again. I am. Blessed. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together. 
be no more children tossed to and fro. Be no more children. Raise your hands all over the house. Stand on your feet. Raise your hands all over the house. Stand on your feet. Be no more children tossed to and fro. Somebody say, I'm grown now. Say it again, I'm grown now. The Lord is on my side. Be no more children tossed to and fro. One of my goals, I want to do all that I can to pass to you. I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm not here just to preach at you. I'm here for your life to change. I'm here for that empty chair that's sitting by you to seat your family members. I'm here because I want your life to get better. I want your family to get better. I want your children to get better. I want your husband to get better. I want your wife to get better. I want you to get better. Be no more children tossed to and fro. Somebody say, I'm a child of the king. Somebody say, I'm a child of the king. Somebody say, I'm a child of the king. Raise your hands all over the house. Be no more children. Ephesians 4.14. Somebody say, I walk in the authority of the word of God. Oh, say it, sir. I walk in the authority of the word of God. Say it one more time. I walk in the authority of the word of God. The power of God. Say it again. I walk in the authority of the word of God. And the power of God. I receive it in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Be no more children. Be no more children. Tossed to and fro. Spinning up all the money. It's time to grow up and save up. Somebody say amen. amen. Be no more children. Just got to buy everything you want. No. You don't need to grow up and save up. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the faith that we live by. That's the faith that I live by. That's the faith that God wants us to grow up. Single lady, don't just take any man. Pray for what you want. Pray and ask God to send you a godly man that will pray. Because if he won't pray, he ain't not going to stay. He won't fast, he's not going to last. I'm trying to help somebody. It's God. We are spiritual beings. And we need spiritual people in our lives. Somebody say amen. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I have never received Jesus. Put that hand up. If you're here, you say, I never. I see you, sir. If you're here, you say, I never received Jesus. All you guys with your hands up, come on down. Come on, son. Right over here. Come on. Come on, sir. You say, I never received him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yep, y'all, come on. Come on. You say, I never received him. All of heaven rejoice when one sinner repents. Oh! Somebody say praise the Lord! Come on, son. Let me tell you something. It was the greatest decision that I ever made when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. As a little 17-year-old boy, not much older than you, I gave my heart to the Lord. He came into my heart, turned my life around. Your life will never be the same. You guys come and pray for him. Your life will never be the same. 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 Save him, Lord. Save him. Save him. Save him. Clap your hands. Save him. Somebody say save him. Somebody say save him. In the name of Jesus. And you say, Pastor, I gave my heart to the Lord, but the temptation got me. Fell off the wagon. If that's you, before we leave, I want to pray for you. Just come down to the altar. You say, I gave my heart to the Lord, but temptation got me. Come on. We want to pray for you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Raise your hands all over the house. 
And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me. I am saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. Say it again. I am saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for all your help in my life. Raise your hands all over the house. The Lord bless you, church. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, on the families of Emmanuel, and I will bless them. They shall put my name upon the families of Emmanuel, and I will bless them. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands all over the house. Father, we receive your word. Watch, pray, that we enter in a, not into temptation, for the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. Go with us today. Lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you. Turn around and give somebody a hug. Let the power of the Holy